All right, Michael, thank you so much for doing this. Really uh, looking forward to this conversation. Um, I've actually been a customer of yours, uh, you know, prior to this, um, although I'm experiencing the, the keto product itself uh, for the first time. But uh, so looking forward to it. Um, I guess maybe a good place to start would be uh, maybe a little bit about your background and kind of how, uh, what led you to starting human. It, it, it is human, right? Is that how you? It's, it's one way that people say it. We, it also stands for HVMS is Health Via Modern Nutrition. Okay. So at HVMN.com, uh, sometimes people get that double entendre off of it, but it's, it stands for Health Via Modern Nutrition. Okay. So how, wh and, what, uh, what, what, what got you to, uh, to starting it? Where'd you come from? Yeah. Yeah. And we were just chatting before the call. You're from, you're calling in from Chicago area, Evanston. That's right. I'm, I'm from Chicago originally myself. I had the good fortune to get into Stanford for undergrad. That's where I met my co-founder and we both studied computer science in undergrad. I, I took a lot of classes as well in the design school and mm -hmm. It was always a tech guy. It was always really interested in specifically user experience, like where that, in, that scene between new technology and how people actually utilize it and understand it and develop new mental models around it. Graduated, worked at YouTube, which was like the best, uh, I, that was my dream job. Like it was super hot at the time. Uh, learned a ton there. And then my interest carried me from, from what I would call like web 2.0, like if, if, if YouTube is like epitome of web 2.0 and like smartphone revolution, like what we kind of saw in the last decade, I started to see that the next upcoming decade was going to be all about the human body and that mm -hmm. the human body as a platform for innovation was untapped and nascent and kind of at this spot where you had a lot of people like myself and my co-founder, we got into biohacking, tracking different measurements, tracking our blood glucose levels. I became a semi-pro marathoner, run six minute miles for the marathon. Wow. We've done, we've done seven day week long fasts. We had a, we had a whole fasting community up in San Francisco for, for years and have tried a lot of interesting different end of one studies on ourselves. And, and it's been cool to see the ecosystem grow, not just us, but a ton of interesting hardware, software, nutrition, all around this thesis of the human body as a platform. So I started got, getting into it personally, applying my engineering systems thinking to it. And then my co-founder and I built this business around, around modern nutrition and what it really was going to look like in the coming decade. And we've really honed in on ketones and specifically yeah. exogenous ketones, a drink of ketones. And yep. can talk more about what that is, why we ended up here and what's going on. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to. I mean, I remember the first time hearing about uh, ketogenesis was... Uh... Tim Ferriss, and I think it was that uh, Dom D'Agostino, and he was talking about like taking a ketone ester and exogenous ketones. And at the time, he was talking just about how, uh, I, I, if I recall correctly, it's been several years, but he was talking about how cost prohibitive it was to create something like that that would be mass producible. And so when I saw that you had effectively done that, I was very intrigued. So yeah, I mean, I guess for, for, uh, for folks yeah. that have zero context on this, what is what is ketogenesis? What are exogenous ketones? What are they helpful for? And then and maybe get into and maybe get into a little bit about how how you all managed to kind of pull that off. Yeah. Okay. Beginning at the beginning, ketones are nature's super fuel. For three hundred thousand years, your body has been making ketones. Your body makes mm -hmm. ketones when you are low on blood sugar. So that happens in a few instances. That happens if you eat really low carb. That's also known as the ketogenic diet because you eat such low carb that your body generates ketones. Mm -hmm. Other, other contexts are if you exercise a lot, if you go on a multi-hour bike ride, you're going to blow through your on-deck carb stores and your body is going to start making ketones. Also, if you're fasting or starving, your body's going to run out of carbs and make ketones from, from fat. Yeah. Your body's has this ability to make ketones because you only store a small amount of carbs. And in the ancient context, like I, there's no frosted flakes on the savanna, right? Like there, <laughs> you didn't always have sugar. There's maybe some berries now and then some wheat, right? I don't know if we were like zero carb as a species, but we definitely did not have three meals a day plus snacks with, yeah. with Slurpees and Twix bars and all that. So ancient humans spent more time with elevated ketone levels. We used to not eat as much sugar move around more, burn off any excess sugar or carbs, and spend more time with elevated 
ketone levels. So in that sense, ketone is the is this ancient natural super fuel. In another sense, it's hyper modern because it's only recently that we've figured out a way to make it where it's a drink, where you can drink it the same way that you could have collagen or CBD or an omega three that you can yeah. you can or, or Gatorade for hydration, right? Like the, the way that you can have it in a normal, relatable consumer beverage. That is our whole insight. We were the first ever to launch a ketone drink in yeah. 2017. And we do a lot, we got a seven figure contract with the Department of Defense Special Operations Command. And we do a lot of work on specifically exogenous ketones. Exogenous means generated outside of your body as opposed to the yeah. endogenous, it's the same ketone, but it's exogenous yeah. is out of your body. Endogenous is inside of your body. Yeah. And yeah. So, so, um, you mentioned that you called it kind of the uh, body super, super fuel. What are, um, again, for folks that just have zero context on like mm -hmm. why someone would, would want their body to be running on ketones versus glucose. Um, you know, what are some of the benefits that, uh, you know, either being in ketogenesis, actually, I'd be curious related to this, uh, mm -hmm benefits of of it in the context of being quote unquote ketogenic and then maybe the benefits of um supplementing with ketones even for somebody that that isn't necessarily trying to be no carb low carb and is supplementing with a product like yours like what are the benefits in that circumstance as well yeah yeah there's there's this the general state is called ketosis like when you have elevated ketone levels it's also known as ketosis and Ketogenesis, to be clear, is when your body is generating those ketones. Okay. So you can be in, if you have a ketone drink, you're not doing ketogenesis necessarily, but you yeah. are in ketosis. Okay. okay. So, so, and there's some, there's some overlap and there's some difference between them and it's, and it's super interesting where, okay. So we've known about endogenous ketones for a long time. Like your, again, your body's always made them. There's a lot of rituals around fasting and runners high and, all these different practices where we were essentially, whether we knew it or not, we were inducing ourselves to have higher ketone levels for different mm -hmm. reasons. In the early 20th century, that was the first time that doctors really looked at it for specific application where they, there was this study in the early 20th century around kids who were having seizures. And they saw that when the seizures were taking place, it was because the brains were not we're not using energy correctly. They weren't getting enough energy in. And that when they switched these kids onto a ketogenic diet and elevated their ketone levels, that for some reason, the, the patient's brains were able to function better. They saw reduced instances of seizures and that these ketones were, the brain was able to metabolize these ketones in a way that they were not able to, there's some disruption in the brain's ability to metabolize glucose. And that for some reason, ketones were more readily metabolized. That was, so that was like 19 teens. And over the last hundred years, we, you know, scientific science discovered a lot about, you know, the Krebs cycle and how metabolism works and ATP is generated and how mechanisms around fasting and your body making ketones. And there's been a lot of discoveries. If you fast forward to the early 21st century, that's when people specifically at DARPA and the National Institute of Health started really looking at, okay, we know that your body can make a ketone. Can we can we have that ketone in a drink? We we know that this ketone is efficient. The basic science on it is it can turn into if people remember their high school biology ATP in the mitochondria, the, pi, the mm -hmm. power plant of the cell. That yeah. that a ketone turns into ATP using. 28% less oxygen than glucose. So it's really interesting when you're like in an exhausted or fatigued state or a low oxygen state in a, you know, in a submarine or in a fighter jet or on top of a mountain, this starts to be why the, the DOD is really interested in it. Um, yeah. Interesting. And, and so early two thousands, DARPA and NIH started looking at, okay, well, what about like, can we isolate this ketone? And that's where some of the basic science started happening and they that's where you have kind of these old, these folks like Tim Ferriss who tried it like, like a decade plus ago. And it was at that point, it was like $20,000 a dose. It was really expensive. It tasted insane. Yeah. It's like nail polish remover. <laughs> so a lot of what we're, a lot of what we've been working on, like, I don't want to, I can't take credit for, you know, all the scientific discovery 
over the years, but what we've done is productize it, like taking it from it's uh, maybe the way that Apple has taken like some really good, really important breakthroughs in material science or chemical synthesis. And they've like, okay, they've made that into a phone for, for a billion people. Like we've taken uh, a lot of what was interesting in the science and figured out a way to productize in a way that's affordable, palatable, uh, translating it out of the, the kind of lab ivory tower bench top experimental mode where all the, there was all these interesting findings, but it's, no one had had that like, Hey, what if, what if we actually make, what if you could just go to your, what if you could go to whole foods and this was next to the yeah, uh, turmeric and ginger shots. Like ketone does a lot more for you than turmeric shot. Like what, why can't, why isn't it? And we know it, but we just haven't, yeah. and we hadn't figured out a way to bring down the cost and to manufacture it at scale. So that's, that's what yeah. we do. Yeah. And, and if for somebody that, that, uh, was interested in kind of supplementing with it. Is it, do, do, do you see benefit for folks that maybe, I, I would imagine that the results are maximized if they are following a more of a ketogenic type of diet, but for folks that are even following kind of the standard American diet, do they see benefits by supplementing uh, with something like this? Yeah, your, your body knows what to do with ketones when they're present. So ketones cross the blood brain barrier. You have the enzymes, present to be able to use it. So you, you will feel like a lot of people drink it and like I'm sipping some right now. Like you, you feel a nice pick me up. It's a nice alertness. It's different from caffeine, uh, but it's in that I don't know, general ballpark. It's not going to keep you up all night. It's not a stimulant, uh, yeah. but it gives you this nice, like clear energy lift for a few hours. And that's what a lot of people like about it. Whether, and that's whether you're doing a ketogenic low carb diet or not yep. when people there is, there is such a thing as keto adaptation, where if you exercise more or if you eat lower carb, if you do that stuff that ancient humans used to do, where you're depleting your carb stores on a regular basis, I'm not talking about like necessarily going full keto diet, but if you like wake up and you work out for an hour without eating a big breakfast, like your body is probably going to yeah. start making some ketones. If you eat low carb throughout the day, um, mm -hmm. your body's probably, probably make some ketones. And basically if you're more, there's such a thing as being more keto adapted where your body is better at a making ketones and B has upregulated the amount of enzymes it has to process ketones. So we see a lot of people that are more keto adapted. They like, it like hits stronger when they drink a ketone, like they're, they, and it checks out, like they have more of the enzymes present to be mm -hmm. able to quickly metabolize it. But someone who's like yeah. totally standard American diet, um, your body is still going to know what to do with it. It might just have less like immediate yeah. ability to do so. Interesting. I had, um, I had levels, uh, on a, uh, a few episodes ago and, uh, we talked a lot about kind of metabolical me metabolic fitness, metabolic flexibility yeah. and things like that. And I would imagine it sounds like, uh, you know, since you're replacing glucose with this, that, uh, you know, especially kind of over a sustained period of time, this would be a very valuable tool in that toolkit. Is that, is that accurate for somebody that's wanting to try to improve their metabolic flexibility? Um, what is, what would the role that keto or excuse me, the ketones specifically play in that equation? Yeah, we, we love levels. I definitely recommend checking out some sort of continuous glucose monitor levels as a, as a great one where friends Sam and Casey and everyone over there, it, we're in a lot of ways, we're climbing the same hill, but from different directions where they're climbing it from yep. hardware biosensor direction. And we're climbing it from a nutritional intervention direction. Yep. And it's all the same mission, which is like, don't spike your blood glucose so much. Like you can only spike your blood glucose. It's like hearing loss, right? You listen to enough loud noise, enough of instances and your hearing is not going to work anymore. It's the same mm -hmm. with blood glucose spiking. So having, a energy source that is non-insulinogenic, meaning it doesn't spike your insulin, um, that you can have for an afternoon pick-me-up. Like you don't want to have a Snickers bar that has a ton of sugar in it. You want something else yeah. that provides you energy, gives you some lift, you know, and increasingly people don't want to overdo it on caffeine either. A lot of people don't have caffeine in the afternoons or yeah. if they'll have a modest amount in the morning that the ability to have something that 
is a cleaner source of energy. It's like, you can think about it as like ketones are the new sugar. We didn't always even have like refined pure sugar is a relatively new invention as well. Like exogenous sugar, you could yeah. call it. Like that didn't yeah. always exist except for in the last couple hundred years. And it's very powerful. It gives you a lot of energy, but it's also like a very, you can think of it like coal or something. It's a very dirty fuel. It's like creates yeah. a lot of oxidative stress when you metabolize it. So the ability to have something that gives you energy, but is a lot cleaner source of it is just, it's like fundamentally interesting. And I think about it like, I, we always call it a nutritional primitive because it's not just for like Navy SEALs and Tour de France cyclists. Like, yes, that's kind of who's the tip of the spear of, of like driving the demand for it. But it's like, we're all doing metabolism all the time. And so if people just want to live to be longer or they want or live, live to be older, or they want to just feel better in the afternoon, like the, a better, yeah. cleaner fuel source makes sense for everyone. Like that's the big vision. I know right now we're like mainly, we get more pickup with like more serious biohacker types, but I, I liken it to I don't know, collagen or protein or some whey protein or Gatorade where like all those started like very niche. Sure. The gate, and then, and then over time they expanded out like from that core bullseye to like just being general population types of products. Yeah. Once they, yep. once they got the awareness out and the cost down and all those things. So I think we're still yeah. early innings, but the big vision is that it's a nutritional primitive for everyone. Got it. I'd, I'd love to learn a little bit about how you all went about doing this. Cause my understanding is it sounds like you guys were both, uh, had tech backgrounds and obviously you were doing a lot of biohacking and things like that, but did not have a background in, uh, you know, the, the chemistry of all of this in terms of manufacturing and producing this. Um, I'd love to learn a little bit about that journey. If you could think back to kind of the early days and like you, you had this idea, wherever, it, wherever you first heard of exo the idea of exo exogenous ketones and you were like, we're going to make that like, how, how the hell did you go about doing that? Yeah, I think it's a combination of things. I think partly it's being polymath is a big word. I don't want to be like <laughs> ar arrogant on it, but it's like not sure. being afraid of like going into a new arena. Like, okay. Yeah. I don't know. Studying computer science at Stanford was pretty hard. Like, it's not an arrogance to say, oh, I automatically know everything else in the world. That's not true, but it's like, I'm not afraid or my co-founder and just the rest of our team right now, we're not afraid to pick up something new and understand it. Like my general, yeah. this is going a little bit meta for a second, but like, like there's only so many logical relations between entities, between things in the world. And every new domain is just the same, like a recombination of these logical relationships with new nouns applied. So whether yeah. you're looking at a computer systems design on the one hand or global supply chain or the Krebs cycle, it's all just like arrows and like <laughs> circles connected by arrows with like logical relationships <laughs> between. So like, and, and, yeah. and then it's new nouns. It's like, okay, you're talking about like acetyl CoA instead of like container yeah. ships, instead of, um, instead of like memory allocation in computer science land. Like you're looking at so I, I think that like a good set of systems thinking, like mm -hmm. the, people talk about T-shaped learning or T-shaped yeah. makers. I think there's something to it where like, if you have that depth of rigor in like an area, it's not an overnight thing, but you can to a degree apply that into other areas. Mm -hmm. The other main thing that like probably even more impactful, honestly, is just like getting out of the way and hiring people smarter than you. like. That's really the answer is like our research lead is a, has a PhD in cardiac metabolism from yeah. Oxford and our product yeah. lead has a chemical engineering master's degree from MIT. Like yeah. that, that's all like, we got pretty far, I think as founders, just by being kind of curious cats and, and reading yeah. a lot, but yeah. realistically it became like, okay, how do we, how do we know enough to know where we're at? Like a B level of understanding where we know what we're not, I don't have a PhD, but I can like, I know what A or A plus level looks like, and I can yeah. go and hire that person and figure out how to weave a, a vision together on yeah. the team. Um, just, I, just because you're kind of geeking out, like it, it, it's, it's speaking of like kind of, you're speaking to like mental models and kind of first principles yeah, yeah. and information theory and all those kinds of things. So if so, like, like if you were, if you were to go into a completely different new domain, you had a new interest five years from now, 10 years from now, 
uh, that you wanted to pursue. Like for folks that where that sounds really compelling, but they don't necessarily know what the order of operations are. Like, how do you go about building that mental map? Uh, and how do you identify what those nouns are? Is it just, is it just as simple as kind of talking to people and then going to the next conversation and the next conversation? Or, or it sounds like you're a pretty systematic thinker in terms of how you approach problems like this. Like, how do you go about doing that? The way to understand any system is you need to understand what the primitives are. So in like a math, in like geometry, right? Like if people remember high school geometry, it's like you have like two points to find a line, three points to find a plane. Like that, like, like math is great because it's this axiomatized deductive system. Yeah. Not everything is like that clean, but like in principle, it's like, it can be pretty clean. Where like, if you're trying to understand how supply chains work, it's like, there's like certain primitives that take place, whether you're shipping flowers or cookies or computer parts, like, and then there's, there's differences across them too, but there's like, I, I, the way to understand a new domain is like go to the primitives. Often, oftentimes that means going to the, the like seminal source papers that were written in that space. Yeah like the older stuff, the kind of like Lindy approach, like the, like, don't read like the latest business book, read the like Dale Carnegie business right. book or read the, right. read the, like, read the, uh, don't read the latest blog on Bitcoin. Like try to wrap your head around the white paper of Bitcoin. Like mm -hmm. go, go as close to the source as possible and then start creating your own. It's like, you're a kid with Legos. Like before you try to make the like X wing Falcon, whatever, like try to just make a little, thing like tr try to put those primitives to use like okay like yeah. i want to run a, i want to be a entrepreneur like okay try to sell like one thing to your cousin on your shopify store like get the yeah. like that one like hello world like that simple like okay because probably 20 things you have to do to like get your first transaction you probably have to set up your pay payment account and a bank account and stripe and this this, this like Maybe you have to incorporate, you have to like set up a product. Yeah. You have to do, like, you have to do a bunch of stuff to get mm -hmm. that one first sale. It's like, focus on that before you try to, Hey, I'm going to make a million dollars. Try to make, try to make $1. And then once you make, yeah. once you have one customer, try to get 20 customers and then try to get a hundred customers. Like, like yeah. I try to break it into as small pieces as possible so that it's not this, Oh, like I want to learn Photoshop. It's like, it, what can you do today? Like, that's like taking where you're at, maybe stretching where you're at slightly mm -hmm. with a, with a task that you can complete in a day or two that furthers your knowledge by 20%. Like you're never going to learn all of Photoshop or all of computer programming or all of e-commerce, like try to orient it around like where you are and where you're at and what would it look like to be half a step of where you're at Yeah, and then go and do that thing. That's super interesting. Um, I think it was one of the things I think is fascinating about this is, is you had a unique, if I'm, if I understand it correctly, one of the unique challenges that you had relative to somebody else is this pro this is a product that existed, but the price point was incredibly prohibitive. And I assume that was because of cost of production or whatever it is. And so part of the, the game for you all is like, in order to sell that one unit, even I would imagine, unless you're, grossly subsidizing it, uh, is like you had to find a way to dramatically reduce the price. And, and, and I think that that's a little bit of a black box for people. Like we talk vaguely about this idea of like economies of scale and about like diffusion of innovations and how things get kind of cheaper over time. But like for, for a startup, especially like a, like a, a early stage seed stage kind of startup trying to say, all right, Part of our value prop is we're going to take a twenty thousand dollar product and turn it into a hundred dollar product. Uh, how the hell do you do that? Like, like what what was you know broad strokes? Like how did how did you think about and attack that problem? Yeah, there's a there's a few different ways to attack it, and it's interesting when you look at like Moore's law, right? It's like the cost of computing chops in half every 18 months. It's like, yeah. it's not like, it, it's always like some weird different thing that chops it in half. It's never like yeah. the same one trick that's going again and again. It's like some very different part of the yeah. overall like tech manufacturing stack will change. It's, it's not like you're just doing the same obvious thing of like, like every 18 months. Um, so how, 
so, so there's no like one generalizable trick that's going to apply to everything. In our case, we did a couple of things. We looked at the formulation itself, like, okay, what can be paired away? So a lot of what was going on in the formulation that was making it expensive was there was a lot of academic patent filing where there was this kind of arms race to like patent the most like hardcore, interesting ketone. And yeah. that was making it expensive. And when we came in with more of a commercial hat, it's like, it's the VHS versus Betamax or the like eight track player versus the regular cassette player. It's like, okay, how do we like make this way simpler? Like we don't, if say, I don't care, I don't need to win a Nobel prize or I don't need <laughs> like a super advanced pat. We do have some IP on it, but like, it's, sure. we don't need like the super advanced patent on it. Like if we strictly care about scale, which is just like different from, I think how maybe a researcher at a institution might care about it. Like it's a different, different incentives. Um, mm -hmm. We care less about novelty and less about having our name next to like a novel invention and more about like, Hey, I don't care. Novel, not novel. I just want to like get this out quick and cheap and, yeah. and get it out there for people. Uh, it's a little bit of a different, less more of an entrepreneurial lens and less of an academic lens. That was one way. The other way is I think just can like, a, they're, they're getting that chicken or egg problem going is always gonna be hard for any entrepreneur, especially in physical goods, where when you go to a manufacturer, like to make your whatever, make your widget, yeah. the more widgets that you're ordering on day one, the cheaper the price they can get you. So like, it's really expensive yeah. to make one widget because they probably can't make that little widgets. Like the pancake factory can only make 20,000 pancakes. So if you want one pancake, they're going to make 20,000, you're going to pay for all of them. And then they'll throw away the 19,999 other ones. Like you can't make too small of a number and maybe you need to be making 200,000 pancakes or 2 million pancakes. So there is a chicken or egg problem that you always have to face and you can address mm -hmm. it with a few different ways. So one way that we addressed it was we had other products going that were less, I was just say, I can, I guess I can say I'm the founder. Like they're less interesting. Like they're less, <laughs> they're less novel, but they were like, sure. th yeah. they were like, we have other supplements, nootropics, that are yeah, super, that's how I they're, found they're, out about you all. I mean, I've got I've been using the fish oil. I mean, like I you know for yeah. example. So yeah, I have it. I have it every day. It's a top decile omega three product. It's awesome. Stand behind it one hundred percent. However, we yeah. did not invent omega three. We did not right. invent the the concept of taking fish oil. So that's yeah. that's what I mean by it. It wasn't an educational I, sale or a production problem to be solved. None of that stuff. You didn't have any of those. Right. Shows. And so that stuff got going quickly. Like we got a lot of flywheel going. We got like tens of thousands, six figures of, of people in our community via yeah. more like standard products so that when we're ready to introduce like, like it's not like we just came out of the blue blank sheet of paper what's a key like here's ketones it's like we already had this community like this this people that knew our brand knew me and my co-founder and we were able to on day one like ketone was like i don't know our eighth ninth product that we had launched and so we had some it's like iPhone wasn't the first thing that Apple launched. Like, so on day one, yeah. we were able to sell like a certain amount of volume. And with that conviction, we were able to, we were able to go to our manufacturer and start with like a larger minimum order quantity. You can add into the mix also like, okay, you have customer demand community base and you have your manufacturer. You can also sprinkle on investor capital. Cause you can tell the same yeah. story of what I just said to an investor and say, Hey, we have latent community interest. We have a manufacturing stack lined up. We can get margin expansion with that manufacturer if we place a bigger order. Our order is pretty big because we have some community, but if we could also stack another million bucks on that first purchase order, the price would come down even more. We could have a lower yeah. price to the consumer. We could get the flywheel going even faster. And I mean, you're an investor. Like, like that, that yeah. type of narrative is going to resonate with some capital partners if you knock mm -hmm. on enough doors and if your numbers check out. Yeah. I was be curious, was that, um, was that a master plan kind of in advance? Like we always knew we want to become the ketone company or that's what we want to eventually lead with. But we realize this is going to take us several years to kind of get the formulation right and do all those kinds of things. And so on purpose, we're going to start with some of these other nootropics and, and focus on community building and things like that so that we have some built in demand and can do some of those things. Or did that happen a little bit more, more organically, <laughs> I would say. I I love that question. And the answer is it was more organic. I, we were Got not, 
that galaxy brain to see it out ahead of time. It's like how Slack was initially a gaming company yes. and then the like chat app inside of Slack ended up becoming the main thing. It's like they didn't, that was not on purpose. Like they were actually trying to actually make good games. And then mm -hmm. the like, oh, wow, we're surprised. The chat app is what's going to really, and then they hard pivoted into the chat app. I say but was, I imagine it that helps like, you a ton, right? Like in terms of building the muscle of like, hey, we've never we've never produced our own, manufactured our own product before. We've never made a proprietary formulation before. Starting with something like Omega Three or whatever it is, I would imagine was sort of like training wheels for you all, and had to be hugely beneficial when you when it did come time to kind of produce this. Oh, definitely. And what I would say was always true along the way was the interest in human performance, optimization, yeah. building products, building community around that. And yeah. going back to, to connecting like, okay, how do you get started? It's like, yeah, I think we maybe we're starting with just the more primitives. Like how do we get a thing out there? Like we probably can't make mm -hmm. a billion dollar product on our first day on market. How do we get something out there that is interesting and noteworthy and can get customers and can get PR and can get some flywheel going so that mm -hmm. we can do the next thing, do the next thing. I think that's, I think that's a really keen question. I think that a lot of people, I, I don't know if I've been asked that before. It's like, we're, we were not, it was not this inevitable thing where like my whole life, I was like, we're going to launch a ketone. It was like, <laughs> what was interesting was like the evolution of si applying systems thinking, biohacking to human, the human body, seeing that that as a general movement is going to take off way more people are tracking their footsteps and blood glucose. Like the human body is becoming a platform that more and more people think about. Let's be a nutritional performance input into that. Let's get something out to market. Okay. Let's get a second, third, fourth, something out to market. Okay. Let's take a sec. What's the absolute most interesting thing that we actually want to spend the next decade on what feels like completely novel. It's not just another omega three or collagen, but what would the next, like ketones to me are like the next omega three where it's not like yeah. we have an omega three product. That's a great omega three product, but it's like, Hey, what shout out to whoever invented omega three, they're a genius or whoever like, like yeah. supplemented, like figured out the first supplement form of that. Like, I, I hope they're doing well. What is the next one of those? That's where we started thinking like galaxy brain on it, but it wasn't, in, it was only once we had, you know, some following, some capital in, something like the, the momentum was where we had a team, like we had some momentum on it where we were able to do, it's not like, I don't want to like poo poo anyone. If you start, if you on day zero, have a billion dollar idea for your startup, I don't want to be on record as saying, don't go and do that. I'm just the way that yeah. we did it was more like, Hey, in order to make a billion dollars, first you got to make a million dollars and then $2 million. And like, we've been more of a, like a stair step approach, yeah. which what can I say for us as well? And even I think, you know, you mentioned like you needing, you know, investor capital being at least a piece of the puzzle there. I mean, being able to demonstrate a track record of bringing products like this to market and understanding the nuances of manufacturing, all that kind of stuff, I have to imagine gave them some confidence too, in terms of being able to write that check. So, um, yeah, interesting. Yeah. Um, I want to talk a little bit about, you mentioned a little bit earlier about kind of this idea of a beachhead market. And I would imagine, you know, like you said, starting kind of here and then kind of expanding over time. Um, you almost by necessity have a, I would think, uh, necessity, uh, a premium kind of brand, right? You have a, it, it's, it's, it costs what it costs partially, I would imagine, because of, of what it costs to, to make it, even though you've managed to drive down the costs considerably. I'd be curious to learn what you maybe discovered in this process about, you know, maybe building a beachhead market. I, I would imagine you probably had pretty good sense of what their psychology was having run these, biohacking groups and things like that for a long time. But like, how did, how did, uh, what you knew about that market inform your approach to branding, positioning, marketing, et cetera, et cetera. Our beachhead market is high performers. It's people who are doing triathlons and working high performance jobs and mm -hmm. they want that extra edge. And the idea of like, a $4 shot of ketones to get an extra edge is like easy, right? Like what's your hourly yeah. rate? Like, okay, if you can be yeah. more effective for the next two, three hours for $4, like, okay, like I'm, I'm with it. Like it's, it's yeah. that person. It's not the, like, there's, there's a lot of people that's not right. I think suffice it to say, it's like the high household income relative skew. I don't want it to always be that way. I wish it was 40 cents. Right. But sure. for where it is, 
and we also, we have this persona, right? I think a lot of people are comfortable talking about personas, which is like, we call it the three podcast rule where no one's buying a ketone unless they've heard about it on a few <laughs> different podcasts. It's like, and, and so we don't even try, yeah. like we don't even try to like sell it to people who have no clue. It's, mm -hmm. but rather we dive into, we double down into the education on it. So we, I mean, we, we work directly with a lot of different podcasts where like the host is known for their expertise on fitness and nutrition or like, like the Tim, the Tim Ferriss's of the world, right? Like where they have that yeah. authenticity with their community. Like for us, that works better than the like Instagram ad of like, Hey, be more productive this afternoon, save 20%. Like that candidly yeah. like works less good for us. Like we, what works better for us is we just assume with our three podcasts, but we assume that no one's going to make a buying decision unless they spend like, you know, an hour, hour and a half thinking about ketones on our site, clicking through, listening mm -hmm. to third parties, just like, like coming to some understanding of it for, for where it's at right now. Right. Like the yeah. key, the college, the collagen market right now is like so mature that like you see it at Costco and your wife's friends trainer uses it. Like, okay, good enough for me. Like, I don't need to like yeah. ketones aren't, aren't there yet. So we double down in these like high education, high trust channels. Mm -hmm. where the, where, where the education can take place, where the, yeah, like where we, where we can like believably get the science across to people, uh, versus yeah. like going for some sort of quick sale. Is that yeah. your question? Yeah, no, I think it does. I, I, um, you know, another piece of it that you mentioned was the community aspect. Like you already, you, you built a community, um, that, obviously is, you know, uh, we've, we've had a number of guests that talk about kind of the, the benefits of almost starting there even, and the power of having an owned channel and all of those kinds of things. What did you, what have you learned maybe about community building and how to, how to kind of utilize it and how to make sure it's engaged and you know, all that kind of stuff. I, I think it's another great question. If I were to do it again, I would emphasize community even earlier and like build even more community even earlier. And yeah. Related to that, it's like if people are thinking about starting a startup and you have a current job or you're in school or grad school, like a thousand percent start growing a Twitter following or LinkedIn following, like while you're working at whatever company, mm -hmm. if you're thinking about starting a startup in a year or two years, like you will never, ever, 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 ever regret having 10,000, 20,000, however many followers, a hundred thousand captive audience whenever you, it doesn't even matter what your widget is that you're going to go yeah. and launch like yeah start with the community first because you see like mr beast right top three youtuber he just mm -hmm. he launched like a hamburger company i don't know they're probably really good i, I should order one they're probably good yeah. like, i'll give them credit they're probably good hamburgers are they like the most innovative hamburger in the fucking world i don't even know i don't even know if that's right. possible they're probably solid right. hamburgers but the reason these guys sell a bajillion dollars of hamburgers is because he's mr beast and everyone yeah. knows what he is and he flips on yeah. the switch and he's selling hamburgers in 30 cities across America on day one, you know, Logan Paul, he has a hydration. I'm sure it's a great hydration drink, but like if you or I made that hydration drink on day one, like we ain't yeah. doing Logan Paul numbers on it. Like he's another I don't know, top three, top five YouTuber. And mm -hmm. it's all to say that having that community, having that recognition, that group of people around you, that tribe, that authenticity will never hurt and will always help. I think like, yes, also do the innovative product development on top of it. Of, of course, like do something interesting. Don't just sell some commodity thing to a community just because you have a community. But um, a lot of first time entrepreneurs, like the, almost the trope is that they're like overly focused on product and making something really nifty and they under focus yeah. on distro. And that like second time founders, like if your first startup doesn't go well, like you make it work really, you make a really cool widget, but you didn't distribute it. That uh, second time founders always prize distribution. They know that like, hey, the pipes, like you can have like a second best product, but if you're in every freaking Whole Foods and Costco and everything in America, like you're going to, you're going to do numbers. So if people could like learn that out ahead, like learn from other people's mistakes, like put, try to like put community first and then product second on top of that. Cause even if you're doing like all the standard stuff of like talking to your customers, like 
getting it out with a hundred people in a prototype format, like doing price discovery with people. Like, wouldn't you rather have 25 K followers on LinkedIn when you're doing that? Like how, like, like that test bed is so valuable. Like for us, even like when we're making a packaging change or something, we just send out an SMS to our, our list and we get like 300 responses and high, yeah. like survey power on those responses. And it's like, okay, cool. People like blue more than yellow here. Like we're doing blue. Like it's, yeah. it's, it's this yeah. amazing superpower. Yeah. And it creates more loyalty because they're feeling, you know, they feel involved in the process and helping shape the product. And now it's part, you know, they're, they're a part of it. That's, that's really cool. Do you, do you, um, you know, you mentioned collagen and, and all of that and, or Omega three, like nobody knows who the creator was of Omega three, uh, or at least commercializing it. Um, it does seem like there's an opportunity with this, like a HubSpot type of thing of like owning a category, you know, like HubSpot owning inbound marketing or whatever it is, or convert drift with conversational marketing or whatever it is. It does seem like there is an opportunity for people to attach you all to the idea of ketones. Um, it, I would assume that that isn't lost on you all. Are there, is there anything that you've tried doing to, or strategies you found for trying to own a category when it's more of an educational based sale? I mean, obviously you're, you're doing marketing uh, things that are, that are more, uh, that give you the opportunity to go in depth in a topic, you know, that's obviously part of it, but like, what else have you been exploring in terms of like a long-term ambition to own ketones, you know, as a, as a, to be the Xerox of ketones? <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a great point. Yeah, Xerox has just become the verb or the and yeah. Kleenex is, is Kleenex. So a couple examples of people who've done it really well, like 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 when you think about pomegranate juice, who do you think of? Yeah, palm, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And yeah. and I think in collagen space, vital proteins did a great job where that little blue, light uh -huh. blue, and they have other colors and flavors now too, but like they've really done it extremely well. A um, few different few different thoughts there. I think partly it's like focus like like just only do that one thing like palm didn't just do orange juice or other bunch of juices it's like they went instead of going a mile wide and inch deep like they just hit it on like yeah. like sell a million copiers and be known ubiquitously as like we are xerox we are a copy machine company before you go and make like your secondary tertiary product uh, mm -hmm. i don't know if we're necessarily the crystal example of this like uh, but I think that other folks are, because for us, like we kind of had secondary products from which we had this launch pad to do ketones. Yeah. Can't, like between us and the listeners here, like we might start like, actually uh, focusing in, doing it in reverse. Yeah, yeah. Because one brand that I respect for like athletic greens, I think they're doing it live where like they have one product. It's called, I think they call it like AG now. It's just called athletic greens. They have one product yeah. and they're selling $150 million of it. Yeah. And they're just ubiquitous. Like, could you or I go make a green powder thing? Maybe, but like, they just have done what, what exactly you were asking about, which is what exactly we we're talking about, which is they've made their name synonymous with like a green boost yep. powder that you should have every day by just dead focusing on it. So another, another like really direct, clear answer to your question as well is in the naming. So our product mm -hmm. It's called Ketone IQ. Mm -hmm. Palm called themselves Palm. There's something about if it's look like we explored the whole map. Like we kind of came back to Ketone IQ. No, we're not kind of. We definitely came back to Ketone IQ. We explored everything. Like what, what if yeah. we call it em Ember or yeah or all like all these different names of of what it could be. Like, what is the feeling? What's a poetic abstract way to talk about that? And we just like, hey, no, let's keep it simple, stupid. Like. It, we, no one knows what ketones are. Ketones are going to be yeah. a product category. Like we are ketone IQ. Like we're saying a little bit about what it does for you. It kind of switches your brain on, but we're like owning like the way that palm owns pomegranate juice, vital proteins. I don't know. They're still talking about proteins and collagen protein. Like, but like your name, like Kentucky fried chicken. Like they just want to be known for chicken. Like if you want to be known yeah synonymous yeah. with the category that you're in and that you're creating, especially for us, like we're creating this category around ketones to be a shame that someone else ran away with it, that, right. that it's helpful to put it into your name and then let the more abstract, like there's a time and a place for more abstract branding 
yeah. applications. Like, it's a whole other conversation. But I, but well, along those lines, out, is like, there literal a literal and direct? Yeah. Is there a world where you you transition you you maybe you know maybe the company the you know the official kind of company name is still HVM? But I mean, are you starting to refer yourself as yourselves more as Ketone IQ? Is that kind of the yes, yes, data. because because all of our all of our other products we now refer to them more as like our like secondary products where like they got us on the launch pad, but Ketone yeah. IQ is the one that's like really running away. So we're more and yeah. more just like Ketone IQ. Hey, go like check out Ketone IQ. Hey, it's Michael from Ketone IQ. Just really like dialing in the impressions on that. Uh, Cause the, okay. Like the way that athletic greens is doing it is really inspiring. Mm -hmm. And you can see where they're at a spot now in, in Kentucky fried chicken, kind of the same thing where like they were Kentucky fried chicken until they were like, Hey, let's be KFC and let's do other things. So like yeah. athletic greens, they're now just AG. It's like, let's drop the A. And so to me that, that says that, hey, they grew athletic. They owned the they category. Wanted... They did it. Yeah, yeah, 100%. They did it. And now it's like, okay, well, when, when maybe we want to do stuff that's not green. Like mm -hmm. maybe you want to do a multivitamin or a what? Like I, who knows what yeah. they will do. Maybe they want to get into functional mushrooms. I, I, maybe they want to get into CBD. Maybe they want to get, who knows. But, but, but like, okay, Athletic Greens got us into this household name. Everyone knows our color. Everyone knows where we are. We have a massive customer base. Now let's dial the name back to something that's more abstract so that it can have different extensions off of it. But in order totally. to like go from zero to one to get that escape velocity, like let's do the keep it simple, stupid name. Let's have one product, one obvious name on that product and ride that up. And then once you're, yeah, once you have nine figure, 10 figure top line, okay, cool. Now we can like think about looking around and other products and, and yeah. softening out like generic genericizing the brand perhaps from there. Makes sense. Yeah, man. There's so many other things I want to ask you, but, um, I want to be respectful of your time. Um, this has been really, really cool. Uh, it sounds like you have an exciting, uh, next 10 years kind of coming up and you know, where, you know, where you're going, you got, you know, the, the brand in place. Um, I guess for folks that want to follow along with that journey to your point, or maybe get involved in the community, uh, where, where can I send them? I'm really active on Twitter. You can find me on Twitter at BDM underscore runner. I'm the same on Instagram. So at BDM underscore runner. Love hearing from people on any, all platforms. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, I love social media. I love how it's conversational. Hit me up. We're all, yeah, our brand is HVMN. So we're on all the platforms too. So check us out. Very and cool. yeah, drop a line. Love, love to hear how people are, are doing or questions people have about about our products. Yeah, sure. Also just entrepreneurial journey and, you know, anything around the space. Yeah. I, uh, I, I don't know. I have, I might have to be a part two at some point just cause I've got, I would love that. This is a lot of fun. I feel like retail, yeah. there's a whole, yeah. I mean, this is, this, this has been fascinating. Um, but yeah, Michael, I really, really, really appreciate you doing this. It's been, uh, it's been fun to watch, um, the evolution of the, of the company and, uh, uh, you know, as a happy customer excited for, for what you have in store in the coming years. Sean, thanks so much for your time. Thanks to all the listeners for listening in. Yeah, appreciate it.